today, uh, Northeastern North Illinois, uh, Northeastern Illinois University also confers an honorary doctor of humane letters on the Honorable Mr. Luis Gutierrez. Will the congressman please come forward? So, uh, Congressman Gutierrez is, uh, represents the 4th Congregational District. Uh, he was sorry. He was first elected to represent the fourth congressional district in 1992, and now, in his 12th and final term, he is a senior member of the Illinois delegation in the U.S. House of Representatives. He is nationally recognized for championing issues of importance to Latinos and immigrant communities. Many of us know that he has been at the very center of major legislative debate on immigration reform and issues that face a lot of uh, dozens of immigrants, hundreds of immigrants. Congressman Gutierrez played an instrumental role in advocating for the executive action by President Barack Obama to provide deportation relief to long-term undocumented immigrants and their families. I think that's a very important registration for us. Thank you for your work. Um, popularly, commonly known as DACA, that program protects some immigrants who are brought to the U.S. as children from deportation. The congressman has also worked very hard with immigrants in, Ch in Chicago and around the country to apply for deportation protections that keep families together. During his time in Washington, he co-authored, authored numerous bills. He has served as the Dean of the Illinois Delegation in the House, US House of Representatives and the Chair of the Immigration Task Force of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. I'm not done yet, he's done a lot. <laughs> uh, the, uh, Congressman Guterres has also served on the Judiciary Committee's Immigration and Border Security Subcommittee and Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security Subcommittee, as well as the Financial Services Committee. He is married. He's a father and a grandfather. He was born in Chicago and raised by parents who migrated to this city from Puerto Rico in the early 1950s. He previously served as an alderman in the city of Chicago, and very surprising, he has also been a teacher, a social worker, and a cab driver, among many diverse experience, experiences. He graduated from Northeastern in 1976, like many of you here, with a Bachelor of Arts in English, and in 2007 was presented with Northeastern's Distinguished Alumnus Award. His speech today is really good for our students, for our faculty, and all of us at Northeastern. His achievements inspire many of us at Northeastern. They remind our students these achievements, that they too, uh, who are sitting in the audience, that they too can achieve great things in life. His background, as well as his successful experience, is not only an affirmation of our own work at Northeastern, our mission and values, it is also a tangible and enduring source of inspiration for our students. Therefore, Luis Gutierrez, in public recognition of merit and distinction, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Northeastern Illinois University, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Human Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, congratulations. And now, our very new Dr. Gutierrez will deliver the commencement address to our graduates.
to the students, the faculty, administrators, alumni, staff, and parents, I want to say thank you. And my particular thank you to the Board of Trustees, the Board Chair, and especially President Choru. Whoever decided to give me an honorary degree today, I want to say thank you too. I am proud once again to say I got my degree from Northeastern Illinois University. Yes, over 40 years ago, I know I don't look it, say it, I don't look it. I sat where you're sitting. I was in your shoes. I did not know that I wanted to be an alderman or a congressman or even work in politics. I knew that I loved a young girl that I met in the cafeteria at Northeastern named Soraida. But she had moved to Puerto Rico in my senior year. But some way, I was going to make sure that I got myself there so I could ask her to marry me. Beyond that, on graduation day, I didn't have any firm plans. So if you're sitting there with a clear plan for yourself, congratulations. It's a lot further than I was the day I graduated. I bet a lot of those plans end up changing anyways. But I wish everyone the best. For those of you who do not have a plan for what is next, I say don't worry. I bet you will figure it out because you will have a degree from Northeastern Illinois University and that, I assure you, given my life experience, is a great foundation to build upon. What you need to come up with is a next step. Take a next step and see what happens. If you pursue your goals half as diligently as I doggedly pursued Soraya Rocho after I graduated, you're going to be just fine. Tell you why. Remember my plan when I was in your shoes? Well, 40 years later, Soraya Arrocho Gutierrez and I are still happily together. We still rely on each other, and we are both very proud, so proud, we cannot put it into words, of our two wonderful daughters and the lives they are making for themselves and my wonderful teenage grandson, Luis Andres. So even though I didn't really have a plan when I was sitting where you are, it turned out pretty good. And parents, friends, spouses, children, and all of those who helped today's graduates get where they are today, thank you. I am sure for most of you graduating today, it was truly a team effort. And I ask each graduate to please not forget to thank all of the members of your dream today, all of the members of your team today. But parents, if your son or daughter doesn't have a clear plan for what they'll do next, relax. Let them enjoy the day. Get to that tomorrow. Northeastern Illinois University has become a university with a mission and a tradition of serving the Latino community. And Latinos are represented heavily in today's class. It is not that others are not welcome. They are all part of the integral part that is Northeastern Illinois University and has a unique place in Illinois as an institution that is helping to grow the capacity of Latino communities. But let's also be clear and give credit where credit is due. We are not celebrating the graduating class of this university that has become a historically Latino serving university had it not been for people who blazed the trail before us. The doors to the schoolhouse and the college classroom did not open by themselves to the Latino community, to women, to African Americans, or to working class Americans. Someone had to push them open. At every turn, 
throughout our history, someone had to fight to open that door, whether it was women who demanded an education and a right to vote, or African Americans or Native Americans, or our Latino forefathers or foremothers, all of us owe a huge debt of gratitude to them because they were finally heard because you are graduating today. They opened the door to education and to advancement for all. I've been thinking about this a lot as I wrap up my career in Congress because I would not be in Congress. I would not be here talking to you if people had not fought and died for voting rights during the civil rights movement of the United States of America. <laughs> Northeastern is here and serving Latinos, but it wouldn't be here. And there probably wouldn't be a Latino congressman from Chicago if black people and their allies had not fought segregation in Selma, Alabama, or fought for equal treatment of the laws before the Supreme Court. People I never met, people I never met, sacrificed so much so that doors could open for me and others of equality and prosperity. We need to keep that in mind and honor those who went before us by opening the door a little wider for the next person, and the next person, and the next person. One of the reasons I focus so much of my career on fighting for immigration reform is because my parents were once the migrants from Puerto Rico. They didn't speak English. They were barely out of their teens. They were not very well educated. And let's be clear, there wasn't a sign on Michigan Avenue saying, bienvenidos, we're happy you came. So I have tried to honor their sacrifice and the help they received from their church and their neighbors and recognizing that they may not always have been a warm welcome for them during the last century, but I can make sure there is a warmer welcome today for those coming to the country in 2018. You see, my dad was 20 and my mom was 18 when they arrived in Chicago. They said that my parents, like most Puerto Ricans, were coming here to get on welfare. They were coming to steal American jobs. That they were criminals. Sound familiar? That they were carrying tropical diseases and they would sicken and kill us all. There was probably some politician probably in New York City, who said, oh, all those Puerto Ricans are rapists, drug dealers, except for a few good ones. So as graduates, I want you to always be aware of the struggles of people who went before you to open up the door. And I tell you something about my mom and dad. Yeah, they didn't have a college degree. They didn't have the finest of education, but they raised their son to never allow bigotry and discrimination to exist without raising his voice. I want you to always take into account that whatever room or classroom or boardroom you make it into, there were people who helped you get there, people who need your help getting there themselves. I want you to commit yourself to opening the door just a little bit wider for the next person and making our society a little more hospitable to the next stranger, the next person who prays differently or speaks differently or loves differently than you do. This is a particularly dark moment in American history for the Latino community and for us all. And we have to recognize that progress for Latinos toward inclusion and equal treatment in the United States has taken several steps backwards in the last couple of years. A person who proclaimed his candidacy for president of the United States by saying that people who look like me are mostly rapists and criminals was elected president of this nation. Build the wall, deport them all, send them back, get rid of them. 
They are bringing our country, he says, down. These are phrases that resonate with a lot of Americans, too many. And we are all the targets of that emotional reaction, whether we are immigrants or whether our ancestors came here on the Mayflower. We are still them to too many Americans. And in the minds of some, we are not part of us. Yet 80% of Latinos in America are citizens of the United States. And most Latinos were born here. But we are considered them and not us by many Americans. 93% of our children are citizens of the United States of America. 93% of Latinos are under the age of 18. And I want to remind someone, they're getting to be 18 real quick and registering to vote. About a million Latino citizens turn 18 every year, and this will be true for decades to come. But we're considered foreigners and strangers in our own land, at least by some people. And I know there are dreamers in the audience this afternoon. And DACA recipients right here in this audience among the graduates today who are trying to continue their lives in career in time of great uncertainty. But I came here to say we stand with you and I will not rest until the job is done and you have your American citizenship in the United States of America. Graduates of Northeastern, we need to continue the immigrant experience by saying Muslims are welcome in the United States of America. We will keep the diversity program open so that Africans can come as free men and women and not in slave boats to this nation. And to the 11, 12 million undocumented workers who work every day tirelessly to make this nation better and greater, we say one day too, there will be a door for you to walk through and we will not rest until that is accomplished. I wanna talk just a little bit about Puerto Rico. For eight months, the people of Puerto Rico have struggled to have electricity, water, schools, medicine, and a roof over their heads. And the island is nowhere near being ready for the next hurricane season. I cannot express to you the pain and the great sadness that watching so many people suffer for so long has brought me. I am connected. I am connected in a profound way to the homeland of my father and mother, as many of you are. For me, every day has been a gut punch since the Hurricane Maria last September. Watching our president entertain himself by tossing paper towels to fellow citizens like they were at the zoo and animals is infuriating. Watching the federal government ignore and turn its back on Puerto Rico was a reminder that we are still seen as them and not us. America helped our people in Texas, Florida, and California, but Puerto Ricans, that's apparently different. I'm proud of the Puerto Rican diaspora, and especially the Puerto Rican community of Chicago for all they have done and contributed and helped. And I want to say, I am so much prouder of the American people who have given generously to the people of Puerto Rico when the government turned its back on the island. This city showed its true spirit, not only in coordinating and sending shipment and supplies, trying to keep Puerto Rico's plight in the news, but the city of Chicago stepped up and sent and took concrete steps to make sure Chicago was a straight haven, a safe haven for anyone who needed it, just like my wife, Soraida's family, who came fleeing the island. But the devastation of Puerto Rico by fierce winds and rains is only part of what the island faces. The Congress took over the island's finances long before the storm hit and is imposing austerity measures, 
closing schools by the hundreds and rolling back social services and pensions, even as hundreds of thousands still have a blue tarp to live under. In Washington, the, same, the main sailing, uh, selling point for the policy to install a junta de control was to supplant the democratically elected government and say to the American people, we'll do it because it won't cost you a penny. And now, just last week, when demonstrators took to the streets on May 1st to protest in San Juan, Puerto Rico, the deep cuts, the police in Puerto Rico used tear glass, clubs, pepper spray to silence them. They pepper sprayed mothers with babies and beat reporters in the display of government repression we have seen many times in Puerto Rico, but which we hoped was a thing of the past. This is a challenge to us as Latinos in the United States. And not only that, this is a challenge to all of us who believe in the democratic ideals of the United States, regardless of your ethnicity or the homeland of your ancestor. When at least 700 children are taken away from their mothers at the border and placed in institutions, separating and stripping them from their mothers and go into immigration detention, that is a challenge to us as Latinos and to all of us as Americans. We know the damage the separation will cause to those young lives. We know we need a functioning asylum system to accept and, and, and evaluate refugees coming from right here on our own continent. When moms and families are fleeing violence from drug wars, guns, and gang violence that all have deep roots right here in our country and the street corners of our city, we have to take responsibility and an asylum system that works and supported by the American people is essential. Our policies contribute to the murder and mayhem in Honduras. Then we act surprised that our Hondurans are literally running for their lives. And now, Donald Trump has decided, A, that we will be making applying for asylum much harder. B, is taking away legal protection, known as TPS, that has allowed 50, 57,000 Hondurans to live and work here legally for decades. He's taking that away, just as he has done to Haitians and Salvadorians. We are going to force documented immigrants to go underground here and face deportation back to the murder and mayhem. Fundamentally, we need a legal immigration system that works for America so that people can come with visas and not smugglers. We need a system that works so that we don't force people into the black market in order to do the essential jobs that immigrants and refugees are doing in this country, even right here at the university. It is on us to shape the American character and reconnect it to the values that have made this country so great. A society that is a haven for religious diversity, not one that bars people because of the God that they pray to. A society where a variety of colors and accents and hairstyles, music and food is seen as a strength and not a liability. A society that says we are in this together and the success of everyone here living is because we build it together as a nation, not a nation that hopes or plans to deport 11 million people because they don't have the right papers. Each of us has to take responsibility for building this country. Each of us has to take responsibility for making sure the country lives up to its ideals and those ideals are strengthened and fortified with each new generation. This is our challenge. I have tried to meet that challenge in my life, but as I leave Congress, I'm not retiring or stepping back from that challenge. I'm just going to approach it from a new position. Part of shaping a better future for the United States and for Latinos in the United States is making sure two things, that we make sure our struggle is represented and that we are connected to everyone else's struggle. So when I see Black Lives Matter, I don't see it as someone else's problem. I see it as my own. And when we do not see it, we are all weaker because of it. See, when we don't show up at the airports when Muslims are being turned away, we are all weaker because of it. 
We need to be sure to be there to support the Me Too movement and support students fighting against gun violence no matter what city they are from or what part of the city they are from. Too many people, too many people to open the door for us and it takes many people to open the door and keep it open for the LGBT community, for the disabled, for veterans, for literally hold it open so that our transgender brothers and sisters can have a place to go at the bathroom. We need to be there and we need to make sure when we are there, we are there as powerfully as we can be by making sure our votes are counted and our community is voting. Every four years, we set a new record for how many Latinos vote in presidential elections. But we know there are seven million immigrants who have green cards, and they've had those green cards long enough to be able to apply for American citizens. And guess what I'm gonna do the next two years after I leave Congress? I'm gonna help millions of them achieve the American dream and take the step from green card to American citizen so they'll be registered to vote in 2020. More Puerto Ricans live in the 50 states than on the island of Puerto Rico. In Florida, there are over a million. I'm going there to spend a lot of time in Florida, not at Disneyland, but organizing the Puerto Rican community. Why? So they can go back to their homeland, so they can go back to Puerto Rico where they want to be. There was this beautiful elderly woman at one of the reception centers here in Chicago and I walked up to her, and she was trembling, she was frightened. And I said to her, as gently as I could, there's food here, you'll be okay. There's medicine, you'll get better. There's electricity, you won't have to live in the dark. She said, gracias, pero que también aquí hay frío. Esta no es mi casa. This is not my home. We have to make sure that she can go back to a Puerto Rico 21st century standards with 21st century jobs, 21st century infrastructure, 21st century education system, and a 21st century future for all of those Puerto Ricans who wish to go back after the devastating effect of Hurricane Maria. Let me end with two things. I have a grandson. He's 15 years old. He's in high school. His name is Luis Andres. My daughter, as you can imagine, is like Miss Super Puerto Rican, right? She's got the curly hair, Omaira, and she met this beautiful young man, my son-in-law, Eclicerio Figueroa. Yes, he's from Mexico. And together, they make up this wonderful grandson of mine, Luis Andres. Luis Andres is like la raza cosmica, right? He says, orale, and ay bendito, like nothing. He eats arroz con gandules and pozole, like nothing. Of course, he doesn't like baseball as much as he loves his Mexican soccer. But Luis Andres, I asked him, I said, grandson, tell me, how do you feel? And he said, grandpa, that's what he calls me, grandpa, I love it. He says, grandpa, I feel real Puerto Rican right here. And I feel real Mexican right here. And then he took his two hands, but I'm 100% American right here in my heart. We have to protect that young man's ability to live in America and cherish the roots of his grandparents, whether from Mexico or Puerto Rico, and at the same time be recognized as an American. That is under threat in the United States of America. I went once when I was a foreigner in my own land. When I was 15 years old, the same age as my grandson, my parents moved back to Puerto Rico. I couldn't speak a lick of Spanish. 
When I registered to go to school, the homeroom teacher said, what's your name? And I said, mm, Louis. And I don't know if I said Gutierrez, 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 because it seemed like every year my teacher changed my last name. So I said, Louis Gutierrez, and everybody laughed. And he said, mm, tú no tienes madre. That means, don't you have a mother? Because in Latin America, and Puerto Rico is part of Latin America, I assure you, you have to use your two surnames, your mother's maiden name and your dad. Well, he said, I don't know what the requirements in Chicago are, but here in Puerto Rico, you have to know at least your name to be in high school. So he sent me home. I was embarrassed and humiliated. I want to tell everybody something. That day, at the age of 15, my mother taught me my name. Luis Vicente Gutierrez Olmedo. Luis Vicente Gutierrez Olmedo. I said, wow, what an astonishing great name, I thought to myself. Hidden to me for 15 years. Luis Vicente Gutierrez Olmedo, licenciado notario. Gobernador, presidente, cantante, actor de primera fila. Luis Vicente Gutierrez Olmedo, I practiced it all night. And the next day I went and there was this girl in the corner. I remember like it's today and I walked up to her and I said, hola. That means for you that don't get it, hello. I said, hola. Mi nombre es Luis Vicente Gutierrez Olmedo. ¿Y cómo tú te llamas? And what's your name? And I felt so proud that I knew my name and I was finally learning to speak Spanish. And she waved her hand frantically like this. Mister, mister. That's what they call the teachers in Puerto Rico, mister. It's part of the remnants of the American government trying to impose English uh, on the students of Puerto Rico and eliminate Spanish. And they still called them mister. Mister, 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 mister. And the teacher looked at her because she was frantic. He says, si sí, señorita, que es lo que tú quieres? He says, este gringo me está molestando. And he said, the gringo is bothering me. Now, I've been called a lot of things on the streets of the city of Chicago, but gringo wasn't one of them. I tell you that story because I never felt so small, so irrelevant, so wanting not to exist, so wanting to earth to just devour me, so humiliated, so dehumanized, as listening to the laughter of all of the students laugh and ridicule at me. That marked a point in my life, because there were students that did not laugh, that helped me. So I say to you today, in this era, if you see somebody who prays differently than you do, Don't laugh and ridicule. If you see somebody who loves differently than you do, don't laugh and ridicule. If you see somebody who dresses or whose accent is a little different than yours, don't laugh and ridicule. Embrace them. Love them. Because they are what makes America great. In your embrace of that diversity is the strength of this nation. I am here today because people embraced me, because people loved me, because they saw my fundamental humanity. And I say to all of the graduates of Northeastern Illinois University, I'm a proud graduate of this institution. Leave here, go tomorrow, be trailblazers, and change and transform America. Make it a greater place than the one you founded. Congratulations and much success to the graduating class.